Buttered Family. The Buttered Family. Let us bridge the gap between generations. Let us shape up the modern family. I remember when I first met you. I felt that God answered my call. There was that one place I always thought about. And I just wanted to be there with you. The place that no eye has ever seen. The place that no heart has ever perceived. I had a great feeling inside of me. That one day I'd be there with you. And now that we're here, feeling so good. About all the things that we went through. Knowing that God is pleased with us too. It's not a dream, this is so true. Feeling the peace all around. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear listeners, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, a brand new day and a brand new show, The Modern Family. And the topic today would be about hobbies, nurturing hobbies. It's a, a very interesting topic. I don't believe um, we have touched on hobbies at all since we started. Uh, always parenting programs uh, are very sort of complex and overlapping. But today we have a very interesting show. And you know what? It feels like being back at school. Uh, we have classmates who have turned out to be world class in their fields. Uh, we, I'm, I'm very excited today. And we have Tariq bin Hilal al-Barwani the founder and president of Knowledge Oman, an IT professional at Nauras, and above all, my classmate. And, well, you are a year older, Tariq, so uh, welcome, Tariq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel like I'm back in school. It mixed feelings because I wouldn't really would like to go back to all those years, but uh, remembering the years when we were together since uh, first grade, Indeed. Uh, I Indeed. was still in nursery. Great uh, days, great days. Yes. And I believe all, uh, old, uh, you know, go, old is gold, really, Dr. Wael. In fact, I'm still in school. <laughs> I'm still in school right now. So uh, We are, we are all. Yes, huh? yes. In the school of life. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you been uh, knowing uh, Tariq for a long time, Hatim? Well, interesting that uh, me and Tariq were neighbors uh, for many, many years and uh, we grew up together. And um, I think he was in the same class with uh, my younger brother, and they always had uh, trouble together. <laughs> yeah. So I was always the middleman. <laughs> oh, the wise man. The wise man, yeah. I would also call it a big brother as well. Um, Hisham, his young brother, is a very, very close friend of mine as well. Okay. So Hatim was our big brother. So it's really, really great to meet you both today. Alhamdulillah. You. It you. says one thing about the, uh, the generation, uh, our generation at that time, is that um, the life there was good, parenting was good, schooling was good, yes. and uh, you turned out to be uh, all successful people and very good citizens, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So, dear listeners, our topic today would be about nurturing hobbies and why we chose Tariq among the, the, the rest of the uh, uh, Omanis here. Although there are a lot of Omanis who have a lot of hobbies, Tariq is one of the rare Omanis who have nurtured his hobbies with the help of his parents and became uh, a professional, a lead, a professional uh, in his field. He was into computers since a very young age. Uh, his parents realized that and nurtured that, that hobby. We, uh, he became one of the leading internet experts in Oman and probably the world. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Thanks alhamdulillah. A lot. So we would like you to contribute with us. We would like you to call us um, on 24602058 call us throughout the program on 24602058 so Tariq to begin with how Dr. Wael, yeah. before, before we start with Tariq mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very curious to know did you have any hobbies when you were younger and maybe uh, Tariq here would uh, qualify what you're saying ah uh, maybe I was hiding it from Tariq but anyway <laughs> uh, well yes I, I do have hobbies uh, and I remember in my report uh, in nursery, uh, my teacher said, he is, he is artistic. Mm. Huh? 
rather than being scientific. I turned out to be a scientist and an engineer. However, my I'm still very attracted uh, to to arts, uh, drawing, painting. So you think f- one day you might, you might be a um, fashion designer? No, not not that way. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Maybe, why not? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe a painter. I like decorating. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, and because I think that uh, food is a type of art as well, I like to cook. Mashallah. Yeah, I like to cook. It's it's an art and it's very calming. When are you inviting us for iftar, inshallah? Inshallah, anytime, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honored. I'll be honored. Yeah. So, Tariq, why why hobbies are important? And do you think that hobbies have been um, underestimated or sometimes suppressed um, in our generations at least? Okay. Uh, before I answer that question, uh, Dr. Wael, I'll just yeah. go one step back and make this definition that we're using today in the program, mm-hmm. that is hobby, uh, uh, clear to all the people who are listening to us today. Mm-hmm. So hobby really is an activity or something that you do during your free time, mm. during your leisure time. It is something that one is passionate about and someone, something that someone is and have an interest working on. So, so, so it's important that we have first thing this definition very clear to everyone out there, what hobby is. Now going back to the question that you've asked Dr. Walid, why it is the importance of hobbies. Mm-hmm. Importance of hobbies, I think it is very, very important because it's sort of, you know, the activity that you do during your free time or your leisure time, it's really an activity to reduce the tension, to really relax your mind, and really to be out of the routine thing, the routine things that one would normally do. And it's something that you do out of fun, something that you are not forced to do. So that's what really a hobby is. An example of hobbies, there's many things. You've got reading, writing, swimming, uh, 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 working with computers, traveling, etc. There's a lot of hobbies that are out there and every person to another might have a different hobby or the same hobby so we got that definition aside mm-hmm. which what a hobby is uh, uh, really is about now talking about its importance going uh, i think i think it, it is very very important for one to have it because if you don't have it then you will end up in this routine life of a number of things that you do whether it's going to work or or or, or only studying you know one would really end up getting tired or exhausted doing the same same activities day and day that's that what i think and is. most importantly he will be or he or she would be doing things that are imposed upon them huh? rather than doing something that comes from within it is just doing routine that is imposed upon them to do uh, to just to gain an ends meet exactly Re- regardless whether they like it or not exactly it's, it's not and i think uh, Another importance of, of hobbies is that it is very important for growth. Uh, growth in terms of uh, emotional growth, intellectual growth. Um, personality hobby, growth. And personality because mm. hobbies come from within a person. It is not imposed by anyone else. It, it comes um, as part of your own personality, the personality that, that you are born with it. It's not imposed, but sometimes it can be directed by the parents. You might be... Uh, Um, wondering and you don't know what exactly is your hobby mm-hmm. and your parents can introduce more than one thing to you and then you would see what uh, your heart belongs to and automatically uh, you would and fit hobbies, in. Ho- hobbies can appear at a very very uh, early age and it just solidifies the idea that it is part of the personality um, and you could be shocked uh, of how attract a child could be to an activity just like that without even repeating it just doing it one time they become attached completely to it and as an example i have a three-year-old called hamza we have an xbox at home and uh, we play all sort of games together uh, normally the users of the xbox is his elder brothers he was never into it until one time he saw us playing bowling hmm. And he fell in love with it and he became a professional in it. Mashallah, he mashallah. plays bowling, he plays bowling on the Xbox and he gets a strike. And he would be doing a dance that I've never seen him. It's like a moonwalk or something. <laughs> <laughs> where did, he, mashallah, learn, mashallah. Where did mashallah. he learn doing that? I don't know. Huh? I can't do the moonwalk. I know about it, but I, don't, <laughs> I, I can't do it. 
And um, I said, okay, I'll buy him a set, a bowling set. And he became obsessed with it. Before, before buying him that, just be, when the Xbox is off, he would just bring anything and would hit it with anything and say, see, this is bowling. Mashallah, mashallah. And I bought, I bought him a bowling set. So you have a champ at home. Yes, of course. So uh, I'll, try, I'll try and nurture that. Although some people might think, what does it have to do with it? It won't earn him any money or it is not part of, of knowledge. But I think nurturing that particular hobby would um, certainly enhance his personality. It would enhance his ability to learn and his mood as well. If he, if he can seek refuge into something that he, he really likes. Mashallah. And gets the support of his family. I think that is part of uh, raising children and uh, uh, it will enhance his ability to learn. Mashallah. Dr. Wael, you are an example. We're looking at an example of parents who are nurturing hobbies to their children. You are an example. Mashallah. Oh, thank you very much. But I don't think I'm there yet. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm, I'm, if my parents could come through the mic and, and hold you from the neck, they would tell you, please don't say that. He's still learning. Okay. <laughs> uh, my, my father... Uh, mashallah, who is in Al Umbar right now? Mashallah. Didn't I mean he is where you are? T I mean he wh where you are today. It's what he was many many years ago. Yeah. I mean nobody knew where would I reach? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I mean it is the same thing. You have introduced Hamza, your son, Mashallah. Yeah. To using the video game and in specific playing with activities that he like. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, you see that he is developing skills through that device. You never know what, where would that reach tomorrow. Uh, and again, you have not only taught him about that game specific, but probably he would like to learn about the machine itself. Mm -hmm. What kind of things that the machine can do. So the, 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 the sky is the limit, Dr. Wael. Yeah. My dad, on the other side, what he has done, he has introduced me to video games as well which were using at those 80s, the Atari video Atari. game. Oh. And then when he introduced me to video games, and then slowly he got a computer at home. And then he explained, all right, Tariq, with computer, you can create those games. You know, a lot of people are talking about video games being a waste of time. And I do agree. It depends on type of games that you're playing. Mm -hmm. There's some games that people should really, really avoid it. And there are other games which are very, very useful and educational. Now, the path that my father took was this. He introduced me to game first thing, to get me interested to playing games and then secondly moved into getting a computer and said with a computer you could create the games not only create the games you could actually thought of be inside the game like the characters moving and jumping uh, you know going from levels to another so that's when he got me into the 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 passion the interest or as we call it in our program today a hobby of working with computers. And that must have driven you crazy and wild. Just your imagination just went wild thinking that you'll be joining your your uh, favorite uh, characters and heroes in a game. And that was an incentive for you, I think. Indeed. I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, Tariq, did this move from your dad help you do good at school? Did it make you relax? Did it make you a, a better student? Definitely. I really thank my dad for introducing me to an activity that would reduce my stress. You know, as kids, really, we have a lot of energy and mm -hmm. we want to put this energy somewhere. If you, for instance, just send your kids to school and then when they come at home, they have a lot of energy. They don't know what to do. What are you going to do? Just let them, you know, they, they, they could break the house upside down, really. Chores, <laughs> chores. Clean but, your toilets. But, but, but now responding to the, the, the very nice question that... Uh, uh, Sheikh Hatim has asked us today is did the introducing me to a hobby which is computing uh, uh, helped me with my schooling definitely it did because when I'm done reading when I'm done studying okay the, the time that I need to use to refresh myself to take a break I would do it I would utilize that for, with my hobby so the question is yes. Because the thing is, why I asked you this, uh, there is a misconception uh, in some with some uh, parents that when you uh, focus on your hobbies, then you let go of your studies. You waste time in hobbies and you don't focus much in, in, and you don't give enough time to your studies, which is, I, I think, it's not the case in, in, many, in, in many times. And you are, you are giving us an example that when you are happy doing your hobbies, it, when you are relaxed doing the hobbies, you automatically performed well uh, in school. There's a two side of the coins here. Uh, what you said, which we give very utmost respect to all the parents, 
definitely you need to have one thing included with this is the balance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to give a balance between the studies that you have or your work and the hobbies that you do if you let your child work on his or her hobby only let's mm -hmm. for, for instance if my father said you Tariq, work only on the computers today i mean i would have not know the other important things in life because there's a reason for us to go to school yes. there's a reason for us to go to the colleges is because you get the different ingredients that shape you today mm -hmm. the computing in fact you believe it or not uh, I, I, I my dad used to uh put a lot of uh balance in me and, and restriction in using computers as well i mean there was a times when he used to come and, and 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 open the door and see me in the evening late night working on computers and take me out sometimes even switch the computers and you know say no to use computers i.e no to uh really get uh, uh indulged with your hobby obsessed obsessed you got it exactly mm -hmm. that's the right word so a balance is very very important you need to get your children to embark into a hobby to learn about a hobby to get into a hobby but you you need to put a balance and again when i say you need to get your children to a hobby do not enforce them but encourage them there's two different things encourage them with it don't enforce them uh, to it yeah sometimes yeah. i speak to some parents and i ask them about their kids and i ask them what's the hobby of your of your son or daughter and they would say that he doesn't have a hobby and i truly don't believe that any one of us wouldn't have a hobby maybe you did not find out what is your hobby or what is your interest but it's there built in inside it's part of your your your, your nature and you just as a parent need to find out what is the hobby of your son i think yes it is it is as i said before it is part of personality uh, if anyone who has a personality and everybody has one then they would have something that they are attracted to something that makes them click some something that makes them relax uh, it could be very unconventional and sometimes uh, a child might be uh, shy to ask, shy to do it in front of the parents. Parents would not even know about it. Or sometimes a child would not um, be able to express himself because, because they are under pressure from family to do well at school and to focus on school. So, or even at a very young age, if that is not apparent, I think parents should take their children into different activities and every time try something else and else. I'll, I'll observe them observe yeah. them while we take while they take them to the parks observe them while while they are interacting with other children observe them uh when basically when they do anything yeah. i would like to relate with that what mm -hmm. you said is is, is 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 very very important very useful and and it is actually what is happening today not in our mind all over the world uh my uh okay every child when they grow up they are like the the the, the uh, a paper a piece of white paper majority I'm, I'm being very generalist here a, a white paper where you would need to introduce them to some kind of subjects topics hobbies that are out there i'm gonna go more in details uh, uh, uh in, in a minute other kids would grow up and they would have some kind of hobby with them now i'm going to give an example related to myself i did not have a hobby actually it was my father who introduced me to computers okay and today because of he introduced me to computers that's the identity that i'm known in oman despite working a number of projects yeah i have created a lot of projects that are related to computers i've created a lot of projects that utilizes computers to make things happen uh, i work actually in, in a company which is now as an it professional as well Two years ago, I was running the Department of Corporate Affairs in Marketing for two years, and then later I decided, no, I still like computers, I'll go back to working with an IT. So that's an example of, 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 of myself being introduced to a hobby, encouraged with it, and supported with different means to get me where I am today. Now, going to others who are born, like, mashallah, Dr. Wael, you said, with an art, that is what you are, uh, 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 the, the hobby that you have, and that that's majorly uh, one of the uh, characteristic that shapes you today that's right right uh, I wouldn't say so I haven't <laughs> I haven't nurtured my hobby unfortunately and I'm preaching okay. what I'm, I don't do <laughs> uh, but it is something that I would love to do okay. uh, if I wasn't an engineer I would have been an artist uh, but it is something that I used to like uh, when I was trying I still like but 
And it's um, never too late. It's, it's you, never too late. I, I like uh, whenever what, I have the chance, I will do it. Um, I like photography and it's part of, of art as well. I like graphic designs. Uh, and whenever I have the time, I just uh, do it from time to time. So I like what you said. If I have the time, I will do it. When you say do it, do it what? Do the hobby. So it yes. means a hobby is a secondary thing in your life as at, well. At the moment. At the moment. At the moment. And what I want it to be, I want it to be a primary thing in my life. Because okay. there isn't anything better in life than doing what you really uh, you're passionate you're about, passionate about yeah. and it's part of you. That's the so thing if, that uh, if it is part of you, you'll excel in it. That's the thing that parents need to know, and 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 even the children need to know to understand that there is a distinction between your career path and your hobby. And yeah. But sometimes that hobby can be your career path, and mm -hmm. you need to 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 find out what do you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Because if, as you said, if you do what you like and what you love, what you have passion in. Then you'll accelerate very fast in it. Oh, believe me, you would love to go to work every day. Yes. If you do what you like to do, yeah. Yeah. you would always uh, uh, innovate. You would always not feel the time that you are at work. For instance, I was talking about, I was working, I'm, I'm still working at Nauras. I worked for Nauras for two years as a uh, corporate affairs uh, the head of the department. Believe me, despite it was a great experience, great learning, great setup, great achievement, but Every day was not like working right where I am right now in IT. Every day I go and I don't want to leave that place. Why? Because I love working with computers. It is part of the thing that has shaped me today with yeah. this hobby. But one another point that we want to talk about, uh, uh, Sheikh Hatim, which you talk about, what about the children who grow up with a hobby that they have? And I give an example as Dr. Wael. My daughter, Dania. My daughter, Dania, watches Pink Panther. And, you know, one of the uh, Pink Panther shows is that he, you know, he goes to one of the walls and start painting the whole wall. I don't know if they remember those yes, days. Yes, yes. Pink Panther cartoon. It was a very, the very good nice old one. days. Yeah, the old good <laughs> days. Now, when, I mean, days after that, we go home every day and we see all the walls are drawn, painted. That's what Dania <laughs> is doing. And then, you know, myself and my wife, we were really getting furious about it. So as uh, our, 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 the, our nannies and, and maids at home, they find it very furious. Every day we go and she, she keeps on painting on the wall. And then we said, no, that is a hobby that she has. And what we need to do, in fact, we need to encourage. And what we should do, we shouldn't say, no, do not do that. We said, no, we actually bought her a, a board that she could draw on it. Be creative on uh, it. Be creative and you keep on drawing. And then that's number one. We got her aboard and kept it in her room. And now we have eliminated the problem and the, 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 the issue we were having, which having the whole house painted. And we got her aboard. Not only that, whenever she draws things on the board or piece of papers, we take them and we stick them on the wall. Why are we doing that? We are encouraging them. Why are we doing that? We are nurturing the hobby. Why are we doing that? We are showing her we support what you do. And, and what she fact, does is important. It is very important. Mm -hmm. We've got Leonardo da Vinci was known for his art. We don't know where Daniel would read, inshallah, but maybe better. I don't know. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that's an example of, 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 an, uh, of an activity. The same thing goes with Hilal, my son. Hilal, if he wants to express uh, his, his things, he wants to send us a message, he just takes a piece of paper and draws or writes messages. He likes doing that. We've realized that whenever he draws or writes messages, it's because he's, he wants to express himself and messages to us. So what I'm trying to say here is, if they have a hobby, encourage them, work with them, join them. If they don't have a hobby, try to introduce them to hobbies that are out there. And the hobbies, there's a lot of hobbies out there. I mean, try to introduce them and see if they will get aligned with it. Uh, I think that's the way. And I think every person can build a hobby. That's, that's one of the ways that I, I wish yeah um, I would mm -hmm. I wanted to share the story of one of my friends my uh, schoolmate when we were young um, he was very artistic and he was really talented in art and everybody else around him thought that this was feminine and it was not good it was something that you should let go but he really believed in uh, in what he does and uh, many years later I, I met him and mashallah he's a very very successful art artist and he works in the in the palace of the sultan Mashallah. and he does all the calligraphy and the paintings in in the palaces and the mosques of the sultan and Mashallah. this shows that the deep belief that he had in what he did and so if he could have you, listened yeah. to what people said and that uh, you should stop you uh, mentioned and, you mentioned mm. this to me uh, before and you mentioned that he was a very quiet character very quiet and, very isolated and he was bullied yes huh? he was bullied a lot he was a victim of bullying at school 
Subhanallah. Uh, and he used to seek refuge uh, with you because with you had your elder brother and uh, he father. used to protect you yes, both. Yes, yes. Huh? And then this was in uh, elementary? Elementary, yeah, elementary. I'm talking about uh, 80s. In the 80s? In the, in the 80s. So and I met him maybe a few months ago after all these years. And I asked him, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I remember you, you used to be a very good artist. And he said, I'm still a very good artist. And I work with the Sultan. Yes, yeah, see, so the, he nurtured that, and his father nurtured, yes, n- nurtured yes. that, and he went definitely, into art school. Definitely, uh-huh. his family played a big role in in in, in giving him support. Yeah, this is this the, is a wonderful yeah. example. It's 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 a really a brilliant example um, of how a, another person could be very successful, uh, although uh, all the surroundings indicate that this uh, child is living a miserable life, uh, being bullied at school. Mm. Is, is not a, an easy thing sure. going every day to school that you leave your comfort at home leaving your parents going somewhere that you think and believe that you will be emotionally tortured and yeah. end up it takes it really takes guts and personality and uh, uh, real determination to go through all of that and stick what to what you really uh, like and be a, success- a successful person and sometimes uh, I believe when you're frustrated as a child or you're sad, or you have uh, emotional problems, this is part of the way that you express yourself. That's yeah. true. And, and, That's and, it. Yeah. So I think because he was bullied a lot, this is how he expressed himself in these beautiful paintings that uh, he produced. Mashallah. Yeah. 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 Uh, one very important thing, uh, Tariq here, is about uh, intelligence. Okay. Um, parents normally relate intelligence and link it with school performance. And they never link it to hobbies. We are talking generally. There are a lot of parents, parents these days who would like to link intelligence to school performance. So their child is intelligent if he, if he gains uh, high marks at school. But they never look at his intelligence and the, how a child utilizes intelligence in hobbies. Um, and they might really say he this even talk in front of him that this child is really useless all he does all day is doing whatever he does huh? and it, sometimes if it is an obscure sort of or strange hobby it becomes even worse uh, that the parents never appreciate that and what they are doing is that they're killing their children very slowly and i think that if they nurture any hobby and realize that it is part of his intellectual uh, personality, then they can unlock massive, massive potential. That's true. I actually can relate that very, very well with my example. Uh, Dr. Weil, um, I have, uh, throughout my school years, uh, I, I, I was good in class, but in Thanawi Amma, mm-hmm. which is your high school, high school, I scored 60%. Wow. 60%. Today, when you've introduced me, you've introduced me as a successful person. I've I've got an identity known in Oman as being among the successful. Alhamdulillah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. The Alhamdulillah. question goes back is to what, what really happened. If you complete your school with a 60%, you will be working in the streets. That's what normally is known, right? Mm. Yeah, this the, is the, the norm. Com- the norm. Yeah. The norm. Um. 60%. Myself, the hobby that I had, which thanks to my dad again, getting introducing me to computers and then from computers sending me to institutes I remember when I used to go play uh, football uh, I think Sheikh Hatim will remember very very well yeah. we used to play soccer I love to play football but there was a times people were surprised part of instead of going to play football he used to go to institutes and take classes computer classes mm. today if you move me to any discipline of computing I would be able to explain it to you very very well even if it is something new I have a strong background and strong infrastructure and that infrastructure is from the hobby that I've learned which is computers that's why I can understand it very very well instead if you get someone else it will take them time for them time to learn but I learned very 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 fast so when I got 60% and because of the hobby that I had which is computing I have utilized my hobby to reach where I am today in fact when I went to Canada for my bachelor's I was among the top 5% of university Mashallah. and I went, no, I went to Australia I was the distinction of the complete university, alhamdulillah. So what I'm trying to say is the hobby has protected me. The yes. hobby, thanks to Allah again, and of course, thanks very, very much for my dad for getting me involved and nurturing me and encouraging me into the area. So hobby is very, very important, as have you, you've mentioned. Very, very important. Yeah. You just mentioned something very important, uh, Tariq, is that 
the perception most of the time that high school is the end of the world. If you don't do in high school, if you don't do good in high school, then that's it. I mean, people You're a failure. Feel, feel sorry, yeah. feel sorry for you if, if you get 60%. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what are you going to really? do with your life? What are you going to do with your life? Yeah. And I'll tell you, you'd be in surprised. In your life. Huh? <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll tell you, believe me. Yeah. Today, you have sentence you for life. Yeah. Believe me, that's very true. That's what has happened. And today, people who got 99%, believe me, not only on par, maybe I'll be on top of that. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil mm-hmm. Alameen. The reason why is because I believe in myself. Head and hoppy, worked very, very hard uh, towards it. Let's take an example internationally. Let's not only look at Oman. You've got people like Steve Jobs. We'll You've come to Steve billions. Jobs okay. and Hatim as well. Okay. We'll come to Steve Jobs <laughs> and Hatim after the break, inshallah. So, dear listeners, we'll have a very quick break, inshallah. So, stay tuned and be with us. Dear listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Modern Family. Uh, what a wonderful show today. We have with us Tariq bin Hilal Al Barwani, an IT expert. And founder and knowledge man, founder of knowledge man, and uh, Tarek uh, has enlightened us a lot about his experience, and we would like really to to learn more. But we would like also for you to join us and share with us uh, your stories and your hobbies with us on two four six zero two zero five eight two four six zero two zero five eight. And we're going to start today with Hatim and his hobbies. Before I, you start with Hatim, I no, think... Uh, we're going to start with you. Don't <laughs> think. Tarek was, was giving us the story of Steve Jobs. Let yes, me continue yes. with that. Steve Jobs is dead. You're alive. You're <laughs> going to start now. <laughs> but it's true. The, uh, Steve Jobs is dead. But what he has left today is, is, is remarkable uh, achievement. And I think, uh, uh, of course, we'll be waiting to hear from, from Hatim, Sheikh Hatim, inshallah, which we ensure he's also going to share with us uh, remarkable stories and achievements as well. As I said, everybody has a hobby. They just need to look for where the hobby is. Going back to Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs w- dropped out from school and college. The same thing goes with Bill Gates. There are two examples of people who, because they had a hobby, have done a lifetime achievement till day. I'm not saying that school is not important. No, school is very, very important. In fact, that's one of the things that uh, my father was on top of me and the same thing i do it with my kids right now but that doesn't mean one should not nurture hobbies yeah so hatim yes yes you, there is no escape you won't let go of this okay one of the things that i wanted to uh, share is that uh, i had a uh, hobby of drawing i was very good at it and uh, it was because of my friend i got the hobby from my friend because the, I didn't know anything about drawing. The same one you the told us about. The same one I told you about. And we spent a lot of time together. And both of us were quiet and shy. So we didn't have much to talk about. So I, I used to imitate what he used to do. And I became good at it. And uh, that became one of my, my hobbies. But again, I think uh, the support of your, your friends and families and everybody around would help you, would help you to develop that into something even even better. The other two obsessions that I had uh, while growing up is I uh, I really like I really liked um, raising pets, and uh, my parents um, were not welcoming that idea at the beginning, and then they started letting go, and uh, they got me a bird, and uh, a few years later they discovered that our house uh, turned into a zoo, and that was time to say to, for them to say okay that I think. We had enough animals in the house, <laughs> but I still have that passion and I wish one day, inshallah, that I would have a farm and I would raise all sorts of uh, pets. Inshallah. It's a very good thing to, to aspire to, to have your own farm and yeah. be uh, self-sufficient. Yeah. Crops and or animals? Crops and animals. Okay. The, other, the other obsession that I had is, uh, which is very funny, which is martial arts. Um, while growing up, I was uh, bullied a lot in school because I was very thin and uh, weak. And uh, I always had this passion for for martial arts. But the thing is, I didn't have an opportunity to learn um, at that time because there were not many uh, clubs that I can go and learn or schools, martial arts schools. And I had to wait until, you know, it, they were they were available. So what I did in one of the summers, I went and I watched 400 martial art movies 400 400 oh, martial art movies and i used to imitate every single move that i could see uh, on the screen and um i hope you haven't started with splits uh, i did everything <laughs> i did everything and then subhanallah 
after I finished high school, the first thing that I uh, that I did before even looking for a college or anything, I enrolled myself in a martial arts school and continued for many years. And I fulfilled my life dream of uh, learning the martial arts. And uh, now also uh, I'm very, very busy uh, with a lot of work. But from time to time I do practice. Uh, so what do you think, Hatim, that mm. we should fear you? No, not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's because why I said that's you about was a big brother you in look, school, you know? Yeah, you look, you look very cuddly now, not very uh, aggressive. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. But also, Hat, if you notice, when you do the martial arts, don't you feel that it releases a your lot. stress and a tension lot. as well? Yes. So that's the thing about hobbies, you know? Yeah. It's an activity that you do it out of fun, not you're forced to do it. So yeah. it sort of tends to release, as I said, the tension and, and, and all the stress, and you feel very good about it. And when you said it was, it, it, it's a funny thing, definitely it's not, Hatem. It is very, very important. And martial arts is very, very good. And the other thing is about the people who are not really verbal, they don't have the verbal skills, the best way to express themselves is, is through motion and action. Yeah. And uh, to me, that was a way to express myself and to improve my, my, uh, my abilities uh, within myself. As long as you don't beat them up. I'm just no, I don't. <laughs> See, uh, our show today is very different, dear listeners. I mean, we in, in a lot of the shows before, we used to talk a lot about uh, uh, concepts and, and theories and, and giving practical advice. Today's, today's show is very relaxed, and you'd realize that we're talking about experiences because there isn't any better way to talk about or to tackle this uh, topic uh, of hobbies and nurturing them than talking about our own experiences and the experiences that actually worked. Exactly. Uh, so there is nothing better than, than talking about that. That's why we, we are emphasizing on talking about Tariq al-Barwani here and our own experiences. We would like you, if you're listening out there, if there's anyone listening out there, share with us your experiences. Okay, call us on 2460-2058. Tariq, we have uh, a question for you. How can we support hobbies we have talked about uh, our own experiences but if you would like to uh, give tips and guidelines uh, let's say uh, hobbies 101 or nurturing hobbies uh, how how can we nurture or support as parents hobbies of our children very good question dr wild i think the first and foremost thing is to watch and look carefully your kids and look for some signs that shows that they are working or playing or using or doing an activity during their free time. Some early signs will tell you what is his or her interest, uh, interest is. Mm. That's number one. If one has a hobby, show them the interest that you have and look for ways to improve them. If one does not have a hobby, that's the other question that I'm sure a lot of people would like to know, is introduce them to the activities that are out there. Uh, and introducing them to activities could be, you know, taking them to these summer schools that are out there available today, the science uh, uh, science for kids or, 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 or learn mathematics and so on. When the kids go there, what happens is that they get they mingle with other kids and they get to see what others are doing and then he or she would say ah that's what i like to do and therefore they will start getting and working with it a very good example what was sheikh hatim he didn't know about drawing he had a very good friend his friend was into drawing and he learned about it and that was and is one of his hobbies i believe yeah so 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 that's the, the tips that i would like to share if one has a hobby show them the interest encourage them and yes do not enforce but rather encourage them uh, with it introduce if 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 one or your children or your child does not have a hobby then introduce them to a lot of activities see what ticks and then start uh, working at enhancing and improving them encourage them and yes do join them uh, with their interest because when you do join them with their interest and encourage them believe me they'll start working hard and doing well for instance when i was talking about dania as an example when she was drawing uh, uh on the wall i moved her into using uh, a board and then when she draws anything i go and say oh wow that's really 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 good you know slowly i start saying whenever she does it and they say what about if you do it this way what about if you draw a head what about if you draw hands what about if you draw flowers and slowly she start building that interest and that that's how one needs to do and it's uh, it's 
I mean, um, supporting them um, does not mean that we need to look for the complicated stuff that makes sense to us. Uh, we might, we, we, we sh- I, what I want to say is that we shall not uh, underestimate um, this, the things that we might think silly. Uh, because a child imagination is 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 massive and very uh, very broad, and they can make a lot out of very little things. As an example, uh, do not miss a chance when you have to pick up something even from the floor that you think that your child might be very interested in. Um, my one of my children, I realized when we went to Jabal Akhdar, he was too much into uh, rocks and different colors of rocks, different textures. And the Jabal Akhdar, it's, um, it's, it's rich in all types of uh, rocks. rocks. Mm-hmm. So when I used to work in the desert, um, I came across some fossil uh, shells. And it was just uh, lying there on the floor. And I picked them, different sizes, and I took it to him. To me, it didn't mean much. But I thought maybe he would take an interest. Because I've noticed one day that he took an interest into different types of stones. And you'll be amazed how happy he was when he saw it and he tried to analyze it and look at it from different angles. Um, geologist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a geologist. The young geologist. Uh, and I praised him, although I didn't understand anything. It just encouraged me to go and learn about fossils, about stones. The next step, I took him to a library. We went all the way from Amman to Abu Dhabi, to a specialist Shana. library, because we don't have good libraries here that would... Uh, give us the choice that we want for books in Arabic. Huh? Um, there are a lot of English books, uh, but there aren't enough Arabic books. So we went all the way to a trip and I made it clear to them that we are going to Abu Dhabi to visit a library. And sure, they were so good. excited. We went to the library and we spent uh, like half a day in the library. And he bought a book on geology and uh, volcanoes and earthquakes Mashallah. and just compliments uh, so you build it piece by piece it's like a jigsaw puzzle you build it piece by piece and, and believe me that is an example of parenting and also nurturing your kids to uh, build up with their uh, hobbies important thing that i want to to mention here is that what you get from hobbies is a life skills what you get i mean what i'm trying to say is that it you will not learn about life in school but what you will learn from hobbies is something that you learn about life. Let me give you an example. It really, really builds your personality. Uh, uh, first thing is that you would start networking with other kids who have the same hobby. So yeah. networking is a yeah. skill that is very, very important today in, in organizations and companies and wherever you are in life as well. It would teach you how to do and to go about marketing, talking about your hobby. Exactly. Present yourself. Present, Present yourself. Mm-hmm. It builds your personality. It will teach you about organizing things organizing your things together so if you see the skill set the kind of thing that you learn from hobbies is thing that you will not necessarily learn from school so is it important it is very very important and today what distinguishes one person from another is their soft skills as you see many organizations they come and they say we've got we're teaching about soft skills about presentation about public speaking about selling whatever believe me you can as parents you can give that skills to your kids as they grow and even and general hobby. knowledge it general builds up your, your general well. knowledge. It builds up the general knowledge as well. Yeah, because so. one of the th- one of the things that I used to do as well when I was younger, I used to collect coins and banknotes, yeah. and this helped me to identify most of the the names of the countries in the world Mashallah. and their currency and uh, a part of a part of their history because I had to go and look for the information, what sort of currency they use and. Uh, uh, whether they, it's notes or coins, whether it's silver coins or gold yeah. coins. So it, it really helped me to build my uh, general knowledge. You, in fact, remind me of my sister who also, my elder sister, uh, who also uh, with, with her hobby was collecting stamps. Mm. So she gets to learn about different countries. So today, I mean, when I talk to her, she knows a lot more country than myself. And the reason is goes back is because of her uh, uh, interest in collecting different stamps. And it was even currency as well as what you do. Mm. So that, that's, that's a very, very good uh, hobby. One, one tip uh, for parents is... Uh, do not uh, be hard on your children when they choose um, a hobby that you think that it might not suit them. So you might see a boy, for example, who is very interested into sewing. Okay. Or you might see a boy who is interested in cooking. Don't tell them this is very girly uh, and it doesn't suit you. 
there isn't such a thing as this is very girly. Uh, a prophet Idris alayhi salam, he was he was a tailor, and uh, outside here we have a chef uh, Isa Lamki is waiting for us, and okay. basically we have the, the majority of best chef, top chefs in the world are are men. Uh, men. You never and know men. that this boy would end up opening a factory. <laughs> Why not? You see, uh, <laughs> that that's something that uh, Chef Isa is wa waving here for us. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, so so you with with, with you know, do not discourage uh, your children with hobbies, but do advise them. You know, sometimes, for instance, uh, you can get uh, some 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 uh, some kids getting involved with hobbies that are not, uh, for instance, not uh, uh, are not going to benefit them in the market that within. Say, let's say in Oman. For instance, I'm going to give an example. Maybe other people might not uh, agree, but for example, for example, singing. It's good for them to learn about it, to know about it, to sing. But look at the market as well. I mean, just play. You, you need you need to be a little bit. For instance, I go back to my dad was a bit of a visionary, mm -hmm. thinking about computers. Would tomorrow be an important thing in people's lives? So, I he got me to it. So singing might maybe. Uh, singing is good, of course. Obviously, people for some people find it's good, but maybe it does not have the market uh, in in one's own country. Yeah. So if it does have the mar uh, market, well and good, do it. If it doesn't, just avoid it. The same thing goes with playing a lot of video games that do not produce any value. Try to look for video games that have learning elements inside them as well. By the way, we have uh, a whole show on video games mm. that will be next week. Next week, inshallah. Or the end of this week. The the 4th of uh, August, inshallah. Okay, 4th of August, there will be a dedicated show okay. on video gaming. Okay. Uh, it might be very strange to talk about it, that the majority of people think of it negatively, but we would like to bring the best out of video games. Okay. And you have touched on this and said that video games helped you nurture Indeed. your own hobby Which and and become an expert in, in computers yeah yeah so thinking of how i could create myself inside the games that was one of the thing and then of course thinking outside the box as well There's, there yeah. is many benefits but uh, we'll leave it with the next weeks i just wanted to emphasize on one of the things which is sports sports can be can be a very good uh, hobby and these days it can become a career as we have a lot of omani sportsmen and sports women who are professional now and it's part of their career so maybe uh, this is one of the, the things that we neglect in, into our kids, is enrolling them in a type of sport that would help them grow better. And, physically uh, as well. Physically and mentally. Definitely. And uh, you never know, they might be very good in that sport and they might be recognized around the world for Definitely. that sport. Definitely. And they, they, they can be someone. And there is a tendency for children to go to the same sport that their parents do play. Uh, that is not a problem. The problem would be if a parent chooses that sport for them and that sport only uh, just because they excelled in them they think that is it should be in the genes and his child or her child should excel in that sport it shouldn't be but i think the trend is normally children would excel in a sport that their parents uh, do do play and do practice but don't restrict them to that give them the opportunity to go and explore other sports as well the other thing that i wanted to mention is that sometimes in life you would go on, you would have a hobby, and you don't, you don't have an opportunity to pursue that hobby, and then you get into a different career. And then many years later in your life, you think and you decide that, no, I have to go back to my hobby, and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I can give you an example of that, is that uh, our national goalkeeper, Ali Al-Habsi, mm -hmm. who was a fireman for many years. He worked as a fireman, but he always had passion for football, and today... He's a star in the in the Arab world and in the international world Shalom. in in football, yeah. and uh, this shows you that when you believe in something and you especially believing in yourself and your ability, then always, inshallah, there is an opportunity for you Definitely. to grow and become Shalom. a star. Passionate at what you do, work on it, and believe me, uh, uh, of course, the sky, sky is the limit. Yeah. Inshallah, you could work at something that you are very knowledgeable at, yeah. uh, but you really don't like it, you would not excel. Uh, you would also be very passionate about something that you have no, not, no knowledge about, you would not excel at it. So you need both. You need knowledge, which you learn from schooling, and you would also need your hobbies, which comes from within your own personality. And I think with this mix, um, it makes for a good future and Definitely. a very prosperous uh, future. And if we just imagine uh, if every parent 
uh, supports their children in their hobbies and in the things that they like. Imagine um, a neighborhood full of youngsters who are really good at what they do. Talented. Talented. Imagine that neighborhood turning into a whole city and a whole country where everyone is really passionate about what they do. And then I think Oman would be a very different place and in de- definitely a very uh, prosperous uh, place. Inshallah. And yeah. I Inshallah. think uh, the, the other thing that we need to emphasize, Dr. Wal and Tarak, is that uh, it's not always important that you should have a career as a job. You can always nurture that hobby and that would be your way of life. Definitely. So we should train our, our children that you have to be good at school, you have to nurture your hobbies and, and take care of your, your studies. At the same time, the, it's not important at the end of the day for you to be employed by someone. You can be your own employee, you can be your own boss. That's even better. Through, that, through your hobby, you can open your own business. Definitely. And that would help the, the national economy. It would help to open you know, different elements uh, in our country so that uh, you don't have a lot of unemployment, you don't have stress on, on jobs. People will be more creative and they yeah. will be their own uh, employers. Definitely. The, the, the benefits of hobbies are very, 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 very big. The ones that I wish to share is this. It can turn the something that you are using as fun to a professional career. It definitely releases stress and tension. Kids have a lot of energy. Use, you could bring the hobbies closer to them so they could utilize the energy there it builds up the personality as i spoke about the networking marketing management organization these are the skills that are utilized in organizations today and of course it gives you life skills which are not really taught in schools Tariq bin Hilal Al Barwani thank you very much for being with us today it has been an honor to have you here and we would love to invite you again whenever uh, time permits and whenever possible uh, thank you, Hatim, uh, for sharing with us your hobbies as well. Thank you. Uh, dear listeners, tomorrow's topic is a very important one. Please do not miss it. Tomorrow we are going to talk about food and diet in our lives and specifically in our children's life. Food and, uh, and diet uh, plays a major role into creating a healthy human being, in both physically and intellectually. So join us tomorrow. 1.30 to 2.30 on the modern family the topic would be food and diet and uh, the, the show if you couldn't catch the show today at uh, live then you could listen to listen to the repeat at nine o'clock all our shows are repeated daily at 9 um, p.m and we end the show as usual with the thought of the day with Hatim. the messenger of allah peace be upon him said the believer does not allow to be stung twice from the same hole Dear listeners, I'm your host Hatem Al Salam and Wa'il Al Harasi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is so true. The, the modern family. Let us bridge the gap between generations. Let us shape up the modern family. The modern family. The modern family. Join the discussion and give us your feedback. Live with Hatim Al Abdusalam and Dr. Wail Al Harasi. The modern family. The hard times we went through, and those days we used to argue, but there was not one thing that could bring us down.